Hello everyone, welcome to the FTCR channel. In this video, we will compare two stroke and four stroke engines, each with unique characteristic. Now, here we will compare various aspects of these two engines, like the power they generate, torque, engine characteristics, fuel efficiency, exhaust gases produced, and more. To make it more enjoyable, let's dive into their history first. And for those not interested in this part, feel free to skip ahead to this timestamp. Okay, let's start with the history of two stroke engine. Early discoveries The fundamental concept of the two-stroke engine first emerged in the 19th century. It was French engineer Etienne Lenoir who introduced the primitive internal combustion engine in 1860, which operated on the basic principles of the two-stroke cycles involving compression and fuel ignition. Further advancements occurred in German 1885, when Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach developed a more sophisticated and efficient two-stroke engine. This engine was the foundation for the early development of vehicles and inspired Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach to create the first automobile, the motor wagon. This vehicle is considered the precursor to modern cars. Following their success, Daimler and Maybach secured a patent for the two-stroke engine, further propelling developments in the automotive industry. From there, two-stroke engines proliferated rapidly across various applications, including cars, motorcycles, and boats. These engines were preferred for their perceived simplicity, lightness, power-to-weight ratio, and reliability. Now, what about the early history of the four-stroke engine? The four-stroke engine, on the other hand, was first devised by Nicholas Otto in 1876. Surprisingly, it was only 16 years after the invention of the two-stroke engine. Although a German engineer set out to develop a more efficient internal combustion engine than the two-stroke, aiming to be the two-stroke killer from the start. The Odo four-stroke engine boasted a higher compression ratio than its two-stroke counterparts, resulting in great power and efficiency. However, it had a drawback in the form of significantly lower RPMs. This engine became known as the Odo engine. Recognizing the potential of the four-stroke engine in 1885, Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach play a significant role in developing a four-stroke engine suitable for powering automobiles. And yes, this engine was used in the aforementioned motor wagon. As time passed and with numerous refinements, four-stroke engines started to see widespread use in motorized vehicles in the early 20th century. In 1908, the Ford Model T, often called the father of mass production cars, featured a four-stroke engine and marked the beginning of the mass-produced automobiles. From that point onward, the automotive industry thrived witnessing numerous innovations, including buses, trucks, motorcycles, and airplanes. Fundamentally, both types of engines operate to generate power during the combustion phase. The energy produced is then directed in the two remaining directions, first into flywheels, which store momentary inertia to facilitate the power cycle, and second into the transmissions, drivetrain, and ultimately the wheels. The key distinguishing factor between these two engine types lies in the length of the process or the number of steps required. Let's begin by discussing the working mechanism of the four-stroke engine first. In a four-stroke engine, there are four piston strokes to complete its combustion cycle. The first stroke is the intake phase. In this stage, the piston begins at the top dead center TDC position, and then moves downward, creating a vacuum force, pulling in the air-fuel mixture. Moving on the second step, compression. The piston retraces its path from the bottom dead center BDC back to the top dead center TDC. However, about 15 degrees before reaching TDC, the spark plug ignites, and we move on the third step. In the third step, expansion which occurs roughly 15 degrees of crankshaft rotation before the piston reach TDC. The spark plug fires up the air-fuel mixture. As the piston approaches TDC, the flame propagates until precisely at TDC. At this point, the expansion process which generates power for the engine takes place. The piston initially positioned at TDC is pushed back towards BDC while delivering the power in two directions, the flywheel and into the transmission eventually reaching the vehicle's wheels. The engine then proceeds the fourth step, the exhaust phase. 
True to its name, the exhaust passes expels the remaining combustion residues through the exhaust port. That's a rough outline of how the four-stroke engine works. How about the working mechanism of the two-stroke engine? Unlike the four-stroke engine, the two-stroke engine only requires two steps to complete one cycle. Let's simulate it with the initial condition that the combustion chamber is, is filled with gases. Let's dive right into it. The starting point for this engine is different. The piston starts its motion at the bottom dead center, BDC. Precisely, when the piston moves upward of the lower end of the chamber, a red valve located at the crankcase opens due to the vacuum created. This red valve acts as a gateway along the mixture of fuel and oil, along with air as the oxygen supply to be drawn into the crankcase. Meanwhile, in the cylinder, the fuel mixture previously available in the combustion chamber undergoes compression up to top dead center, TDC. However, similar to the four-stroke engine, at about 15 degrees before the piston reaches the top dead center, the process continues into the second step, where the spark plug ignites to initiate combustion. When the piston truly comes to the top dead center, TDC, this is where the second step occurs. What has propagated fully results in a phenomenon known as expansion. This expansion pushes the piston back towards to the bottom dead center, BDC. As the piston opens the exhaust port, the remaining combustion residues are expelled. Soon after, as the piston moves further down, it opens the transfer port. The fuel air mixture beneath the pistons, precisely within the crankcase, get compressed and forced into the space with lower pressure, which is none other than the combustion chamber. This transition of gases is also known as the scavenging process, where the fuel is pushed into the combustion chamber, plusing out the previous combustion residues. That's roughly how the two-stroke engine works. As the name suggests, it's two steps for one power cycle. However, it's important to note that when the piston moves upward, the two-stroke engine has inefficiencies. Some of the fuel returns to the crankcase until the piston completes its passage through the transfer port and reopens the red valve. Not only that, but some of this fuel also makes its way into the exhaust gases and get expelled. That's essentially the working mechanism of the two-stroke engine. Now what about their advantages and disadvantages? As for their advantages, the two-stroke engine boasts a higher maximum RPMs, coupled with a faster power cycle. Moreover, its fewer components and straightforward construction make it lighter and most cost-effectively to produce compared to the four-stroke engine. However, the two-stroke engine has its share of drawbacks. It tends to wear out faster than the four-stroke due to its integrated lubrication system, which combines with fuel as a carburetor or injection mist. The lubrication can evenly spread to every nook and cranny of the engine due to its operating mechanism. Furthermore, the absence of the valves in the combustion chamber results a significant amount and unburned raw fuel wasted during the scavenging process. This leads to higher fuel consumption and denser exhaust emissions. The two-stroke engine is also more prone to overheating due to its higher RPM, because every engine rotation produces power, making the two-stroke engine more susceptible to overheating. As for the disadvantages of the four-stroke engine, its increased weight and the complexity of its components lead to the higher friction force, raising the production cost of its parts and assembly. However, it's worth noting that despite their respective shortcomings, the four-stroke and two-stroke engine have been continuously developed to address their drawbacks. For instance, in the case of the four-stroke engines, the addition of more valves for the OHC engines, increased torque through the higher compression, the implementation of variable cam applications, and the use of turbochargers or superchargers for force induction have helped enhance their performance. On the other hand, two-stroke engines have also seen ongoing advancements such as introduction, fuel injection, and power valves to reduce high emissions or pollutions while boosting engine power. There have been additions like radiators to manage engine heat and direct lubrication to bearing areas. All these developments aim to create better engines in terms of performance, efficiency, and emissions. Now if someone were to ask which one is better between these two, well, it's come down to your specific needs and the working environments. But in most cases, looking at the widespread application of the four-stroke engine in vehicles today, it's clear evidence that, as of the making of this video, 
Post-stroke engines have the upper hand. Additionally, the worldwide Euro regulation set a definitive benchmark, further emphasizing the four-stroke engine superiority over two strokes. Regarding thermal efficiency, two-stroke engine typically achieve around 15%, while four-stroke average about 25%. So it's evident that fuel efficiency compression tilts heavily in favor of the four-stroke. There you have a brief explanation of two-stroke and four-stroke engines that we can provide in this video. Feel free to share your thoughts and discuss them in the comment section below. I'm Sainov and thanks for watching.